In this video we're going to look at how to earn a micro-credential. Now you may already have the skills um, or the competencies required for the micro-credential or you may need to learn them. So this course, um, uh, this, this website has these uh, topics and they contain all the information you require to learn a competency. Now alternatively you might have already developed those competencies as part of your work in which case you just need to go straight down to the submission part and, and submit a demonstration of competency. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about how do you earn that micro-credential and all the information you need for that is sitting in this submission thing down the bottom here. Uh, so we're looking at the uh, road pavement micro-credential. So we click on this and you'll notice that there's three documents here. The first one is the submission specification. Uh, I'll just click on this. And so what the submission specification is, it was the, the formal document, if you like, to get these micro-credentials aligned to the NZDE. It needed to set out a formal document of what someone would need to um, do to demonstrate a, a specific competency. So here's the competency here. The learner is able to design, specify and understand construction of a road pavement, basic road pavement. Um, here's the NZDE learning outcomes. You should, if, if you read all this and it's all familiar to you, then you probably know it already. However, you'll find that in the learning resources, um, in the micro-credential page, these are all covered. So there's two ways of doing it. You either know it already or you're going to learn it from the learning resources. This part here is the demonstration of competency. So how do you demonstrate that you've got that competency? Now this is the, the preferred way to do it, is using a, uh, just give us a design report um, showing us that you can design it. So that's the first part there is a pavement design. Now you'll recall that there was a topic that covered pavement design and it's much the same as that. You'll, I'll, you'll see that in a minute. Next one is specification of the materials. What are the requirements for the materials that are used in the pavement? What is the requirements for the sub base, for the base course and for the surfacing? And the last thing is, how do you construct the road? A methodology, plant, and quality control. So we'll look at that more in a minute. Uh, this next bit here talks about the formal process. The formal process involves two stages. First stage is you submit your demonstration of competency, and that's what we're talking about here. Um, and then we review it, um, and if it meets the requirements as set out here, if we can tick every one of these boxes, then uh, the next stage is for us to just have a discussion about it. And the discussion is the requirements of the discussion here. The discussion is just to make sure that it's your own work, that you, you understood what you put down. So we'd be talking about what, you, what you've designed or what you proposed and uh, asking you why you did it. We we're also looking for a broader understanding of the topic. So not just what you wrote down, not just what you picked as a, say, a surfacing material. So, for example, if you picked a chip seal, we'd ask you to describe what other options you had and why you picked chip seal over, say, asphalt or concrete. So those, um, that discussion is really more broad, broad brush, more broad ranging, just to see that you understand the full range of the competency, not just what you put in your demonstration of competency. So that's the, um, the submission criteria, have a look through that. Um, for, this, um, uh, for this particular micro-credential, we have provided a sample format just to get you going. And so what this is, is a suggestion of how you might want to set it out. You can just take this, this is a Word document, and just fill in the blanks if you want to. Um, if you do that, then uh, and you do it properly, then that, that's what we're looking for. If you've already done this with a, uh, you've got a company document that demonstrates the competency, then that's fine as well. We're just trying to make it easy for you to show you what, um, if you don't have that sort of information at hand. So we're asking you to do a design report just to, to, to get used to, to the way things are presented in uh, engineering. Uh, the introduction, uh, purpose of the report, contents of report. Now this would be maybe a couple, two, or well, three, four sentences. Um, this design report, this front part of it, would be maybe one at the most two pages. It's not a big thing. 
Okay, uh, the next one is design requirements. This is where you tell us the background to the road. What sort of road is it? So for this demonstration of competency, you have to um, design uh, and come up with a construction plan for a two, three hundred metre section of road. You can make it up or you can, it could be a road that you've, that you've worked on uh, or we'll have some scenarios on the side as well if you want to use one of those. And so that's like things like what type of road is it, uh, what's the, what, what are the requirements, is it in the middle of a town, is it a residential road, is it an arterial road. Uh, the CBR, once again, uh, we're not looking for a full-on geotech report, we're just looking for you to say, well, the CBR for this one is assumed to be this much or whatever. So in the scenarios that we'll put down here, they will have CBRs and that sort of business. So you need to, we need to see that you've designed the road for this specific environment. Next one is the pavement design. And really this is just a section here where you're referring to um, designs, uh, calculations and drawings and specifications that will be in the appendices. So appendices are bits you put after the report that contain the detailed information. The report's there for someone just to get a quick view of the whole thing whereas the appendices provide the technical detail that the engineers need to know. So all this does is um, you just say that the drawing is as set out in Appendix B, the material specification is as set out in Appendix C. Same with the pavement construction methodology, um, the quality control, and the summary is just what has this report showed. So you can see this isn't going to be much more than a page or two. So Appendix A, this is where most of the business is happening is in the appendices. Appendix A is much like the topic we did on pavement design. And you, uh, we, we gave you a few exercises there. Um, so you set out your design parameters. You use this chart to come up with the pavement thickness, uh, the, the base course thickness, the sub base thickness. Okay, so the next part is, is to um, draw it. And we did this as part of that exercise as well. So I've I've just done this. If you want to do a hand sketch, that's probably even better. This is this is might not fit in with what you're doing. So it would be sort of how thick is the pavement? What type of material are you using? Um, you know, gap 40, gap 65, whatever it is, uh, and how thick it's going to be. Um, same with the base course, and also specify a um, a surfacing. Uh, the next part is the material specifications, and what that's going to be is um, the material, so you, you will have come up with um, a, ba a sub base, a base course, and some surfacing. You can also specify the curb and channel if you wish. Uh, and all I'm asking you to do here is to go through the um, specifications and come up with the things that need to be tested, the requirements of that particular um, sub base. So, for example, the sub base has to have a grading that fits within the gap 65 grading envelope. You'll recall that. Subbase doesn't have a T NZTA specification, so I've just used the Auckland Transport Code of Practice. Um, it's on um, in the resources for this uh, micro credential, uh, and so the first line there is grading. So we need the the proper grading, um, those grading envelopes and things like that. There was the crushing resistance was the next one. So we went through those um, in the learning resources. And then you do much the same for the base course, and you recall that the requirements for the base course and for the sub base are much the same, although the base course has more rigorous ones. So for the base course, you can go through TNZM4. Once again, the first one there would be grading, um, grading test, and TNZM4, what there's a clause in there that describes the grading envelope. So you'd sort of refer to that. The next bit is the construction methodology, and once again it's um, the steps required to carry out the construction. So the first one is lay the sub base, and then we're looking for the activities that are carried out to do that, and the uh, the plant that's used for it. And then you step your way through um, all the stages right up to the ceiling. Oh, by the way, for this, it's sub base, base course, but there'll also be um, a surfacing as well. So you'll need to go through the surfacing uh, specifications as well to to fill in that. This table will probably take you maybe one or two pages. Uh, and then there's a construction quality plan. So while you are doing each of these activities, while you're laying the sub base, there will be tests that you'll be undertaking. So you'll be measuring the layer thickness, 
you'll be checking for segregation. And once again, that involves you going through TNZ B2 and filling in the gaps. You're going to find that the um, when you come down to the lay base course, it's going to be almost exactly the same. So once again, the construction quality plan, and that's all we require for you to do for that particular thing. So what I'll do now is I'll go back again. And so here's the last thing is demonstration of competency submission. So when you have put that together, then you come to this site here and you submit it online. So it's an electronic document and you submit it online here. And the way to do that is you just go add submission and then it asks you to add a submission. So if you click on this, it says add and upload a file. So you go upload a file and then you browse. And for example, that's my, um, my flash drive. And so I'd pick out the, the file there and then I'd click on it, double click on it, and then it would appear in there. And then when you've got the right file there, you just upload it and uh, it's automatically submitted. And then we contact you. So that's all that the um, that's all that the earning the micro credential involves. The next step would be we'd arrange a time to have a bit of a discussion. Those discussions are like five, ten minutes. It's not a big deal if you if it's all your own work, then it's it's really easy.